වැත්තරම මේ වැවබැදි රාජ්‍ය මේ වැවබැදි පුරවරයේ මෙහෙනේ ඉතින් ඇත්තටම මේ රාජ කාලයේ හදපු වැව් රජවරු කරපු දේවල් නිසා තමයි අදටත් අපේ ජීවිත මෙහෙම හරි මේ ආර්ථිකයේ මෙහෙම හරි තියෙන්නේ Over 2400 years ago in Sri Lanka a tiny country near the southern tip of India flourished one of the finest hydraulic civilizations of the world This country at the core of the southeast monsoon has 80% of its territory covered by a dry zone prone to water scarcity Its ancient kings built a sophisticated network of small tanks connected by canals to large reservoirs to collect and redistribute every single drop of rain the land received The tanks were built in a cascading system using the natural inclination of topography of the land full of small watersheds. They kept the natural cycle of the water through soil, vegetation, and atmosphere. The main goal of the system was to save and reuse water, allowing cultivation of rice in the dry zone, tanks, paddy fields, watersheds, canals, and natural ecosystems were perfectly interlaced. Let not a single drop of water go waste into the sea without benefiting the world as said by King Barak Ramabahu in the 12th century AD was the reusing principle behind the cascade system the origin of such elaborate hydraulic engineering and ecosystems is a mystery that to date remains unsolved Ganga is a young mother that lives next to one of the tanks in Kalanchia වැව් නැත්තම් ඇත්තටම අපිට වාරි කර්මාන්තයක් නැහැ නේ අපිට මේ ගොයිතැන් කරන්න වෙන්නේ නැහැ වාරි කර්මාන්තේ නැත්තම් The design of the tanks was influenced by the Buddhist belief that humans need to live in harmony with nature so specific areas of the tank were dedicated for wild animals like endangered Asian elephants birds and many other species from the nearby forests It is one of the only man-made ecosystems that managed to keep a perfect ecological balance for centuries, keeping water, nourishing soils, allowing to cultivate rice year-round, regulating the local weather, and letting animal and plant biodiversity thrive. They were based on a culture of sharing, community ownership, and respect of the natural course of water and animal life. The cascade system was perfectly adapted to cope with Sri Lanka's climate, characterized by current droughts and floods. The tanks were equipped with features to prevent floods, preserve water, and control evaporation. Then after that, after going to the land, we need to have a net tank. වැව් නැත්තම් අපි ඉතින් අහස් දියම බලාපොරොත්තු වෙන්න හිටියොත් අපිට අපිට කවදාවත් කුඹුරු කරන්න වෙන්නේ නැහැ. ඒ පුරාණ කාලේ රජවරුවේ කරපු වැව් නිසා අර අහසෙන් වැටෙන වතුර ටික ඉතුරු වෙනවා අපිට. ඒ ඉතුරු වෙන එක අපිට ඒ විදිහට පාලනය කරගෙන ගොයිතැන් කරන්න පුළුවන් ඒ නිසා. ඒ වැව් හැදුවේ නැත්තම් අපිට ඒක කරන්න වෙන්නේ නැහැ. අහසෙන් වැටෙන වතුර ටික මේ නැත්තම් ගලාගෙන යනවා. Today Climate change is exposing Sri Lanka to higher temperatures, heavier and more irregular rains, and longer droughts, and most of the cascade systems are in disrepair. The tank ecosystem hasn't been properly maintained. The ancient tanks design and construction sophistication was poorly understood by modern engineers, and some key features were dropped. During the colonial era, tank cascade systems were neglected and abandoned. Today, all the people in Sri Lanka experience the climate change. We don't want to look at the statistics; we we feel it. When we talk on climate change, there are two major groups who actually suffer from the climate change. One is fishermen; the other one is farmers. Many farmers accumulated debts and hope for the rains to come on time. The Ministry of Disaster Management of the Government of Sri Lanka, with the support of UNDP. is working to adapt to the new climate conditions. Ancient kings were visionaries. Their sophisticated systems of tanks, canals, and reservoirs kept a perfect ecological balance and was able to mitigate droughts, cool down temperature, and save water. For this reason, the government of Sri Lanka and UNDP are rehabilitating 33 tanks that were in disrepair and need upgrading given the new climate change realities that are unfolding in this part of the world. 
In doing so, the government and UNDP will also be reintroducing ancient elements that have been forgotten over the centuries. By restoring these ancient uh, tank, village tank systems, we will be providing solutions for both, both the disasters, droughts and floods, as well as improved livelihoods. Tanks are key to support Sri Lanka's extreme rich culture of home gardening. Rehabilitated tanks moisturize the entire area, benefiting not only paddy fields, but also villagers' home gardens and wells. Rehabilitating tanks will make communities more self-sufficient allowing them to produce a surplus of crops from home gardens and rice, which Sri Lanka farmers associate to their very own cultural identity. UNDP is also supporting Sri Lanka to use geospatial data on disasters, climate change and socio-economic conditions to identify the most needed interventions. A national database with geospatial data on climate change, disasters, and related loss and damage was established and a climate vulnerability index is being developed. This will allow central and local governments to identify the most vulnerable villages and appropriate adaptation actions. <laughs> Without data, I cannot see anything. Data say uh, what is the requirements. Without data, we cannot get a clear idea about the problem and situations. UNDP and USAID are also supporting the publication of a study on the economic cost of climate change. UNDP's holistic approach to support Sri Lanka to adapt to a changing climate and its work to revive millinery ecological wisdom has brought back hope to people like Ganga. <laughs> Thank you.